Hi everyone. Welcome to my second tutorial on making a CH HOTIS system uh, usable for Star Citizen. Uh, this tutorial is going to build on the map we created in the previous tutorial. Uh, so you already have to have a working map for your CH gear for uh, this tutorial. Um, if you don't have one, uh, please run through either uh, my first tutorial or create your own map because uh, we're going to build on top of an already existing map. Uh, we're going to do a couple of little tweaks, uh, nothing major, but it's going to make it significantly more useful uh, when playing Star Citizen. Uh, so aside from the CH Control Manager, the other program you're going to need for this uh, tutorial is the SCJ Mapper program. Uh, you can find the link in the description of the video, uh, but you will need that program because we're going to do a bit of XML file editing with it. All right, uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do is start up your Control Manager and load the map that uh, you previously created. All right, so step one are little tweaks. You may have noticed when playing the game that there's a bit of an imposed dead zone around the center of the stick. Uh, you may have thought that this was an issue with your stick, that uh, the stick was giving you a dead zone. It's actually not. There's uh, something in the way CIG has the joysticks programmed in Star Citizen right now that is creating a dead zone around the center of the stick. Um, it's really annoying. It's uh, not as bad as it was when Arena Commander was first released, uh, but it's still there. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to change our gain and response settings uh, to put a non-linear response curve on our stick. Um, so this is the way I have this mapped. And what this does is it creates a more uh, aggressive response towards the center of the stick and smooths it out as the stick's throw increases. Uh, what a lot of people do is they'll actually map this opposite in most games, so it's much smoother around the center, which is good for uh, precision aiming when you want very little response around the center of the stick, and then gets more aggressive as uh, the stick's throw increases. Uh, that unfortunately will just make the problem worse. Uh, so we're going to change it so we have this type of S-curve, where we have a more aggressive response in the center of the stick. And we're going to do that for both the X and Y motion of the stick. Otherwise, you'll just have it on yaw or pitch. Uh, the reason we don't want to change our sensitivity is because this changes the linear sensitivity. Uh, so it would actually not really solve anything. If you crank this high enough so it wasn't a problem around the center, uh, you'd have ridiculous response towards the outer edges and you'd be overshooting a lot of things like crazy. Uh, so you can play with this a bit to find uh, what setting you like. Um, like I said, that's about where I use it. Um, I've also used it about there, uh, which is uh, also playable. Um, any more than that, and it gets uh, a little sensitive around the center, and you really start to feel the uh, drop off in response. Uh, but like I said, uh, like you know anything else when you're using a HOTUS, just play around with it and uh, find what works for you. Uh, so that's the first thing we're going to tweak. The second, uh, in our last tutorial. We set up our little thumbstick here so that it did horizontal and vertical translation, uh, but it used the keyboard commands. So this means we could only move in one of those four cardinal directions at once, and it was either full on or full off. Uh, we're going to change this so it's analog. And that'll, uh, aside from giving us analog thruster response, that'll also allow us to mix. So you can now do diagonal translation and mix uh, horizontal and vertical instead of just having one full on or full off and only one. Uh, so the first step here is you want to put that back in DirectX mode. And we're going to assign this to CM Device 2. Uh, note how on our stick and our pedals, we have it assigned to CM Device 1. Uh, you don't want this on CM Device 1. You want it on CM Device 2. And this is so that we can map the X and Y axes uh, properly into the SCJ Mapper program and in a Star Citizen. Uh, some people have issues when uh, they have more than one device plugged in, but remember here, we've done a combination so that this is still one logical device in Windows. Um, so Star Citizen should not have an issue reading uh, the Joy 1 and then Joy 2 with this assigned to CM device 2. Uh, so DX axes, you want to match these axes up. So X to X and Y to Y. So your CM device 2, Y axis, it's fine. And you want to do the same thing. For X, DX mode, CM device 2, X. 
Um, you probably don't need any uh, gain and response settings on here. It's such a limited motion on this stick, you pretty much wouldn't notice anyway. So you can save that map and make sure you download it to the stick. So we need uh, the SCJ mapper program to read it when we launch the program. So you can exit the control manager, so that's all we're going to use it for here. Uh, next, I'm going to assume you've already uh, downloaded and uh, extracted the SCJ mapper program. Uh, if you haven't used this program before and you're not familiar with it, it has this quick guide here. Um, I can't emphasize this enough, guys. Read the documentation. Um, it goes through, it's not very long, um, it's very well illustrated, the author did an excellent job here, and it describes in good detail how to use this program. Um, a lot of questions you might have uh, are probably answered here in the documentation, so make sure you spend five or ten minutes and just go through the documentation, like you should on any program like this you use. So load SCJ Mapper, and you'll see up here we have Joystick 1 and Joystick 2 since we uh, now have two CM devices mapped. So the first thing we're gonna do in here, uh, you've probably noticed that when you go into coupled mode, um, you no longer have yaw on the stick and it switches to the rudder pedals. Uh, I personally find that absolutely infuriating. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the map in here so that when you go into decoupled mode, yaw stays on the stick. So you wanna scroll down in here to the spaceship movement section and if you notice where we have uh, yaw mapped here, it's mounted JS1 rot Z. Because uh, if you remember in the CH manager, we assigned the Z axis to our stick's uh, X axis. So if we move the stick left and right, we get a response on our Z axis. So that's corresponding to yaw. So what you wanna do is scroll down to the section here where it says Newtonian yaw. And you'll see here it's mapped to JS1X. Uh, again, if you remember from our control manager, JS1X is mapped to our pedals. Um, and you can see down here, if I move the pedals, it goes to JS1X. No, we don't want that. We want, move this stick again to select your uh, rot Z axis. Make sure you have JS1, or uh, sorry, Newtonian yaw, select this, so Newtonian yaw, control JS rot Z, hit assign. Right, and that's gonna change your Newtonian yaw to your JS1 rot Z axis. So that now means that uh, you'll have yaw on your stick in both coupled and decoupled modes. Second thing we need to do is we need to enable our vertical and the horizontal translation to our thumbstick. So it's called here strafe vertical and strafe lateral. So we'll start with vertical. You're gonna to wanna to click joystick two. And if you move the thumbstick up and down, you can see it registering on the Y axis for joystick two. So be strafe vertical, joystick two Y, hit assign. And you now have strafe vertical mapped to joystick uh, two Y. And we're gonna do the same thing for lateral. You want be strafe lateral. If you move your X axis on uh, the thumbstick, you can see it register up here. So be strafe lateral. Uh, make sure X is selected here. Sometimes it's uh, hard to make sure you're uh, only moving the stick in the, or sorry, the mini stick in one direction. Let's so make sure it's V strafe lateral, joystick 2X, hit assign. And that now assigns our thumbstick to horizontal and vertical translation. Uh, next thing you want to do is hit dump XML. And that's going to create your XML map in this nice window here. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna right click on this window, hit save as, and just save it somewhere. I just leave it in the default SCJM directory that I made. Uh, it doesn't really matter, you can put it anywhere. So we'll call this demo map and hit save. You're gonna want this command up here. It says PP rebind keys. Um, if you use layout my joystick is your name, uh, you can copy that. But for now, we're just gonna copy out PP rebind keys. And you can exit the mapper program. Next, what we wanna do is create a text file. You can put, again, you can put this text file anywhere. Uh, you'll probably wanna put it on your desktop or somewhere you can uh, get to it easily. And we're gonna call it 
SC map, again, you can call it whatever you want. I just call it SC map to make life easy. You can go PP rebind keys, hit space, and here you're going to put the full path to your new XML file. So make this easy because I just put mine here and copy that directory. Find my map, which was demo map.xml. Copy that. Hit file and save. And what we use this for then is before we start up Star Citizen, we can just right click this, copy, and then we can paste it straight into the console. So I'm going to go load up Star Citizen and show you how this stuff works in the game. Okay, so we're in the game. Uh, so what you're going to want to do to use your custom map is press the tilde key on the keyboard. Uh, that's the one to the left of the numeral one to bring up the console. And if you copied that line we saved in the notepad file, just hit control V to paste it in, press enter, and you'll see your demo map loaded, uh, enjoy, and that's good. That means our uh, demo map loaded and the game found it without error, which is great. Uh, so then uh, you're gonna wanna go and hop in your uh, ship. And we'll just hop in the Hornet here. All right, so just a quick demonstration of the changes we made. Uh, so the first thing uh, that we did was set up our nonlinear response curves to try and smooth out the uh, dead zone that exists. So you can see here we actually now have very, very gentle control around uh, the center of the stick, uh, which is much better. So we haven't completely eliminated the dead zone that exists, but we've reduced it significantly. Um, and that still gives us a fairly linear response uh, throughout the whole range of motion. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's definitely an improvement over uh, what it was. Uh, the second thing we changed is we added, or sorry, rather changed our Newtonian uh, decoupled mode so that our yaw is the same as it is in coupled mode. So if we're yawing in coupled, switch to decoupled, uh, you can see there I'm really changing between coupled and decoupled mode and I have absolutely no loss of directional control in either of them now. Um, of course, you still can roll in coupled mode, but uh, that's significantly less important considering now we can actually properly um, uh, yaw the ship with our same uh, controls when we're in uh, decoupled mode. Uh, so that makes uh, pulling some of the more advanced maneuvers a, a lot faster. Uh, you can certainly pull the same maneuvers you could, but now it's, uh, it stays on the stick instead of swapping back over to the uh, pedals like it did before. And the third change we made was adding analog strike to the thumbstick. Uh, so if we go into coupled mode, or sorry, decoupled mode, you can now see that we have our analog striking control. And then when you combine that with our change in yaw, this uh, certainly increases your ability to easily maneuver the ship. Um, and overall, I, I think it's just a great improvement. Uh, for example, like I said, we can uh, strafe diagonally. Um, you can see the directional indicator there is uh, moving around more in a circle now. Um, so it's a big, big improvement over what it was. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, basically all the changes we made for uh, this one. Uh, again, I think it just makes the uh, CH HOTUS even more useful in this game. Uh, makes the responses much more natural. And uh, that's it. Uh, once again, if you have uh, any questions, uh, let me know.